Hi, welcome back to Don Digs In. I'm Don, and today we are doing the Versus video. I've done a few Versus videos already, but I really wanted to make sure I had compiled enough information to give you a really good overview of both of these workouts. So today we are going to do a comparison of the Tracy Anderson method and the Hamlin method. So lately there has been a lot of movement between these workouts. For various reasons, people have been switching from one to the other. They could have an injury that's been reoccurring or their body just needs to move in a different way and they're looking for a change. So the reason why people have switched can be varied, but everybody is looking for a good workout that works for their body and it really challenges them to get better. And both of these workouts do both of these things. So if you've recently switched over from one to the other or back and forth again, they're both interchangeable. There's nothing wrong with doing either of these workouts. They will both give you a good body. So grab yourself a fresh water, grab a coffee, grab the laundry that needs to be folded, and sit back and relax because this is going to be a little longer than normal, but I'm hoping that you're going to get a lot of value and information out of this today. Now, I have been doing Tracy Anderson since 2020 and thoroughly enjoyed my journey. I do have a video on my journey, so I have really had a lot of time to experiment and get to really know the workout. This video is for anybody that's been interested in both of these workouts and really wants to know a little bit more about them to make an informed decision on what is going to work for them. They work for any age group. I am 64 and I've been able to do these workouts. So we're going to get into a little bit of what it takes and just the processes that go along with these workouts. So I have been a personal trainer, a nutrition coach, a life coach. I've owned a gym. I've worked out for over 40 years. I've spent a lot of time in the fitness industry just for my own personal aspect as well as working with clients. Now during both of these workouts, my diet and frequency of exercise remain the same. So I wanted, before we start, let you know where exactly I was in both of these workouts. So when I did Tracy Anderson, I was doing keto with intermittent fasting. That was what I was on at the time. It worked awesome for me. When I did Hamlin, I'm on intermittent fasting and low carb. Not a lot of difference. My weight has fluctuated maybe four pounds. So not a lot of difference as far as weight goes. So both of these workouts, I drank 100 ounces of water a day. I start my day off with 32 ounces of water, which is a liter. And then I just keep going throughout the day. And I aim for 100, but I'm usually over 100. But the water is such an important aspect of any workout that you're doing. Water is your lifeblood. You need water in your body. It's what you're made of. The more water you can get in, the better you're going to do. I did both of these workouts in the morning. I did them in a fasted state. And I do have a few injuries that I am working with. Now, these are not injuries caused by either of these workouts. These are injuries that I've had for many, many years that I've kind of learned to work through. But I think it's important that you know where my physical aspect is and where I started this journey from. None of these things have kept me from doing my workouts because I understand what my injuries are and I understand how to modify the workouts to accommodate them. So if you do have any of these injuries and are afraid that you can't do the workout, check with your doctor, find out, or a physiotherapist, and find out how you should be modifying these workouts so that you can do them because they are all doable with a very slight change. Now I'm going to talk about what equipment is needed for both of these workouts. They are both extremely similar in their equipment, so we're going to start with shoes. You need to be wearing shoes for both of these workouts. It's very important. You're doing dance cardio, you're doing any form of cardio, you need a really good running shoe. You also need a really good mat. Now I have a one inch thick mat. I do have all these things will be linked below so you can check them all out. I have a one inch thick foam mat. This has been a godsend. I have bought the half inch, nowhere near as good as the one inch. A yoga mat is a no go for me. It just does not give enough cushion on my knees. You spend a lot of time on your knees in both of these workouts. So it's really important that you have something that's supportive, but gives you enough flexibility that you can do the motions without any injuries. You also need some weights. Now I have several sets of weights. I'm going to start with the two and three pound weights. Both of these, Tracy uses three pound weights. Hamlin uses two pound weights. Weights are very inexpensive. Walmart sells them for a dollar a pound. So two pounds or two dollars, three pounds or three dollars. Easy to pick up. If you don't have weights, you can use a water bottle. You can use sand in a water bottle. You can use some cans, whatever you have around. Weights are not necessary for either of these workouts and you can do them without if you're just beginning. So this is not a deal breaker, but it's good to have some nice light weights. I also have a set of hand weights. Now these I've had for many, many, many years. You just stick them on. 
and you can do your hand weights using these. Simple, these are one pound. These are an old beach body from an old workout that I had, but I've used them for many, many years, and they really come in handy, especially when you're starting something new and you don't want to get too much weight on. I also have a set of ankle weights. Now, ankle weights are not necessary when you're starting either of these workouts, but again, good to have in your arsenal of equipment. These are one and a half pounds, Amazon, $14.99, link below. I have green because I pushed the wrong button. So I have green weights, doesn't really matter. Get yourself a set of weights. You may use them, you may not use them, but you don't need them to start. Now I also have a set of sliders, just because I've had them for many years. Hamlin does use sliders in some of his workouts, but they are not necessary. And especially if you are just starting out, you may not have a strong enough core to use these. But they're good to have, they're inexpensive. If you have a carpet, you'll need something with some slip. If you have hardwood floors, you can use two dish towels. So there's a couple different things you can use. You can use some pie plates, you can use paper plates. So anything that's going to give you that slide is what you're going to need. I also have a few different bands that come in handy and they're just something, again, to have in your arsenal that's really useful. So one more thing that I found really useful when I started Tracy Anderson was I purchased the 30-day method. Now, when I first started this program, I researched. I looked into this for a long time. I watched every single thing I could find on Tracy Anderson. Every interview, everything that talked about her program, how she developed it. This book is a wealth of knowledge. You can pick this up secondhand on Amazon. You can probably pick it up at a secondhand bookstore. Um, it just follows through her program from the beginning and really tells you how she developed it, what she thought was useful, how she does the workout. It has great information as well as great pictures in it on how to do different moves that you will find helpful. There's also a diet plan in here. She does not use this diet plan anymore, but it is in the book for those that are interested in doing that. So you can follow through the 30 day method as well. This is just a treasure trove of information resource manual. You will use it time after time after time. I'm constantly pulling this out to find out how I'm doing things and just little bits of information that I may forget as I go along. So we have all the equipment that's necessary to complete these workouts. And I want to say before I dig into them that I love both of these workouts. They both bring different things to the table. Both of these trainers are extremely qualified in the body and how the body works and they are result driven. All of them can show you results from their workouts. They design bodies. This is what they do. And it's something that they really have in common is they both design amazing bodies. Now, I did all of my workouts in the morning in a fasted state after I drank my liter of water. And I did this for both workouts. I also based this information on 90 days. 90 days was the time frame that I felt was really good for me to do both of these workouts and give them equal opportunities. So. Tracy Anderson's program works around 90 days. Hamlin's does not work on a time frame, but I thought it really gave me a good way of comparing how these two worked and how I reacted to both of these workouts. So I'm going to be doing the 90-day metamorphosis omnicentric workout. That is my basis for my results. And with Hamlin, I'm starting with the free three-week rotation. You can find this rotation on the Hamlin community page. I will link that below. Lots of information in the featured section on his workouts. So I'm going to be basing it off the three week rotation and then all of this free content. All of these workouts I did with totally free content. I love the fact that nowadays we have the internet. When I started in the fitness industry, there was no internet. If you wanted to do a program, you had to purchase it. And programs were expensive. Buying VHSs or DVDs, you know, were hundreds of dollars for programs and you didn't even know if you were going to like them. So you ended up with a lot of programs that maybe were just way too advanced. If you saw the infomercial for Insanity or P90X and you bought them thinking that I would be able to do them, but your fitness level wasn't up to what these programs required, they just sat in a box. So with the internet, you have an opportunity to try so many different programs out there. And it's really an awesome way to see what you like, make yourself up a program and see, is this something that I'm going to be able to stick with? Does this fit in my lifestyle? And if so, what programs do I want to pursue and continue with this program? So let's talk a little bit about each of these programs in more detail. Now, the Tracy Anderson program, Tracy's workouts are based on creating balance in your body. This is her tagline. It's creating balance in your body where there isn't balance. She 
worked very diligently to create a body that is tiny. Okay, Tracy is all about creating a tiny body. And she does create a tiny body. She works on all the accessory muscles. These are the muscles that lock everything together. These are not the huge muscles of your biceps and your quads. These are the small interlocking muscles that hold everything together. The inside your abs, the inside your butt, the around your joints. This is what she is working on is all these tiny muscles that are going to tighten up and make your frame nice and small. Majority of her workouts are based around these smaller muscle groups. Her dance cardio is based on quick little movements where your body is not getting tired of doing any one thing repetitively, but it's extremely choreographed. So you have two parts to this workout. You have a 30 minute mat workout, which is an extremely fast paced moving workout, and you have a cardio dance portion. Now, when I originally did this workout, I did the 90 day program and I did not do the cardio portion. The reason I did not do the cardio portion was it was too overwhelming. I just found that it was difficult, not a dance background, not a gymnastics background. If you don't have any type of movement or you can't dance, you're going to struggle a little bit with this workout. Like I said, I've done a lot of workouts out there and this is a difficult workout for a beginner. But as you push your way through this workout, you will find some really amazing results. So I did not do the cardio at the beginning. I did a second round of meta and I incorporated the cardio and that made again a world of difference. So I wish that I had done the cardio in the beginning with the program, but I just found it a little too overwhelming. I spent a couple minutes every day watching it to try and learn some of the moves and I still struggle with it, but I can get through it, but I still struggle with it. So learning Tracy Anderson has a really big learning curve. There is not a lot of direction in this workout. She talks very briefly about how you're going to do the move and then you kind of got to figure it out. There's no discussion on where you should be feeling that, exactly where your body should be pointed. It, it kind of talks about form a little bit and she talks about angles, but not enough for you to really understand at the beginning. You have to figure it out on your own and she wants you to figure it out, out on your own. She wants you to figure out how your body needs to move to get the best results for you. So you need to work on that contraction and finding that contraction and understanding where you're going to get it from. The dance cardio portion is a half an hour long. You can break it up. I started doing 10 minutes, then I went to 20, then I went to 30. I was not able to do 30 minutes off the hop. There's a portion during the dance cardio workout where she says to you, when you're totally exhausted, and she says, you have now danced for five minutes. Extremely overwhelming when you hear that because you're like, wow, five minutes. But if you stick with it, you will get to the 30 minutes. It does take time and you really have to build up your stamina and your cardio. But you will be amazed how quickly that can happen once you get doing it. So that was what I based my workout on. Tracy Anderson has several lanes and levels to her workout. She does have beginner, intermediate, and advanced. Now, the metamorphosis is one of her beginner workouts. This was the foundation of her program. This is kind of where everything started from. She does have a precision series and a couple other series and as well as the 30 day method. This again is another program that you can do. And there's some beginner cardio if you want to start with that. So I started right with the metamorphosis program. I didn't do anything else. I went right into that 90 day program to see what results I was going to get. She does have a precision series and a couple other series and as well as the 30 day method. This again is another program that you can do. And there's some beginner cardio if you want to start with that. So I started right with the metamorphosis program. I didn't do anything else. I went right into that 90 day program to see what results I was going to get. Drink your water. Now the Hamlin method works on a different principle. These are simple, basic workouts that were been around forever. You know, the 70s, 80s, and 90s, we were all doing step aerobics and different types of aerobics mixed in with our cardio and floor work. This is where he is. It's back to basics. There's nothing fancy going on here. Simple moves that anybody can follow. He does not have different lanes or levels. Everybody starts where they're at. You don't need to have any tremendous workout background or physical ability to get through these workouts. Being able to lift your body weight in both of these workouts is extremely useful, but not necessary. You can start from where you're at and progress slowly through the workouts. 
He does not have a streaming service like Tracy has. He does sell programs. Most of his programs involve 10 workouts. There's a model workout. There's an inch loss workout. There's a blismatic workout. If you check out his community Facebook page that I will link below, check out the featured section. There is the three-week free rotation, which is what I used when I started this, as well as some really great information on how to do his workouts what is recommended, time frame, different things like that. So you can get a lot of really good information. It's a great page with excellent admins who always have a lot of information. As same as Tracy's community page. I have had a, a lot of questions answered on there and found both of these to be really helpful, and I will link them below. But Hamlin is for anybody, where Tracy may require a little bit more effort and a little bit more coordination. Definitely coordination. Uh, Hamlin's cardio, you're doing step touches, you're doing grapevines, you're going front and back, like simple little things that you can follow. There's not any really creative kicking or things that you need to understand how to do as with Tracy, you're trying to learn choreography. You're not doing that in the Hamlin method. His workouts, as I said, simple, basic, easy to follow. Any level can do them, but it's up to you to get your form where you need it to be so that you are progressing as you get better at the workout. So just because you are doing the same workout as a beginner doesn't mean you're not getting good results. Results come from form and how many repetitions that you're doing. Tracy calls for a lot of repetitions. You're doing 40 repetitions of each exercise because you're working those smaller accessory muscles that really take a little while to get deep into. Where Hamlin is working a combination of exercises, mixing the cardio and the mat work together in a format that has your whole body engaged at all times. Both of these workouts are broken down into cardio portions, arms, abs, and legs, and butt. All of them have the same context that way. You're going to be working all of these body groups, but different workouts, as I said, different classes in Hamlin can bring different things to the table. There's a high-low cardio if you just want to do cardio. There's a tone if you just want to do toning. But you can mix and match all of his workouts with each other. You don't need to follow a set program. As in the Tracy 90 days, you are following on with a set program. Every 10 days, this workout changes. You will do it consistently for 10 days. And it's really important that you follow it the way it's prescribed. 10 days is for a reason. She is getting to different muscle groups and each one works on the next. So if you do the first 10 days and you didn't like the second 10 days and went to the third 10 days, you are going to find yourself when you get to level five struggling because you did not get what you needed to take you on to that next level. So it's very important that you follow it as prescribed and do it for that 10 days. You're going to find that when you start out, it's going to be difficult. It's going to take you a couple days to figure out the moves. Then when you figure out the moves, you're going to start working on your form. Once you figure out your form, you're going to start working on your reps. Now, by the time you get to your ninth and 10 days, you've actually got it. And then it's time to challenge your body with a new workout. So I love that mind-body connection that you get from Tracy Anderson that I don't get from any other workout. But for me, it's really a lot of thinking, and I'm trying to work everything together, and it really keeps me engaged throughout that entire workout. Now, Hamlin is just a totally different beast. He is very chill. Hamlin's recordings are not a big production. His recordings are simple, done in a studio, with a camera or a phone, and he just presses record. Nothing wrong with that. If you are okay with a simple, basic workout, that's what you're going to get. And all of his courses are the same. They're all filmed like that. And it's just not the big production number like Tracy has. The sound quality is not great. Now, he does play half-decent music, but the sound quality, when he's talking is hard. As I said, it's in a studio. He's not mic'd. So sometimes you're struggling between the accent, if you have trouble understanding somebody that has an accent, and the echo. So I do find sometimes I'm struggling to kind of figure out what he wants to say, but it doesn't keep me from understanding what the workout is. Tracy has a lot better production quality and sound quality, but there's not a lot of direction. So let's take a second and just talk about sound, music, and quality of the productions. Now, Tracy is definitely a production. It's a set. She is doing it for you, with you, to do it together. It's not a classroom setting. It's just Tracy doing the workout and you following along with her. It's filmed in a front view, which I like because it's what I'm used to. Now, her sound is really good, but the music is really bad. 
Again, we're talking about metamorphosis. I'm not talking about her online streaming or any of that music. We're talking about the, what I did. So the music is really bad. Because there's not a lot of direction, which is very important when you're doing this workout, it is not easy to understand what you're doing. It's not easy to know where your foot needs to be, what muscles you're working. You really need to concentrate on these things. And you do not get a lot of direction on how to do it. So there's a lot of self-figuring out. So I really found that I was able to make up my own playlist. Tracy also has Spotify playlists that you can use. Make yourself up a playlist. I'll link mine below. I've got three and a half hours of music, and I use it for every work that I do, and I just shuffle it. It's just a lot of upbeat music that I find very motivational and keeps me going. So she has an extremely generic music with metamorphosis. The reason for this was at the time that she was filming this, there was a lot of licensing going on in the music business. And you just couldn't use anything. This was when I owned the gym. And we were always struggling. We had to use this crazy music that was all re-recorded into this super fast beat because you couldn't just use music off the radio. It wasn't allowed. So this is where she kind of got stuck. So it was easier to put on some generic music that just played throughout the video because you just couldn't use anything else. So feel free to make your own playlist and use it when you're doing the workout. You need to work out to what you like to listen to. So nobody's going to please everybody. Now with the Hamlin production, there is really no production to this. It is him in a studio with a tripod filming his workout. Very simple. There's no microphone. There is not a lot of talking. But again, you do not need a lot of direction in this workout. He gives you direction where needed. But again, you can play it with a different playlist because the music is good. It's 80s, 90s, and classical music. But the sound is awful. The echoing of the studio makes it very difficult to hear it, hear the music. Sometimes I just find it easier to put on my own music. So both of these workouts I use my own playlist for. I don't feel I need to listen to their music because it is difficult to listen to. And as far as direction goes, both could use a little more direction only because the sound in Hamlin is not that great. So it's harder to hear what he's doing. Tracy definitely can use a lot more direction. But if you pick up that 30-day book, it will really help you in figuring out exactly what you're looking for. Both of these can work for everybody. You just need to know what you're getting into before you start. So with the Tracy Anderson method, I think that I went in totally blind when I started. I did a lot of research, but I was really blind to what actually the workout was going to involve from me. So I wished I had been in maybe a little bit better shape before I started it. As I said, I've worked out my entire life, but we all go through these ebbs and flows in our life. You know, being older, I've done every workout that there is out there. So at different times in my life, things change, right? You have children, you get busy with other things, work gets in the way, and you're just not able to consistently follow a workout plan. So you will find as you go through life that your workouts will change, your timing will change, how long you can work out will change, where your workout will change. All of these things come into play. So I do wish I maybe had been in a little better shape before I started Tracy, but I was able to get through the workout without any difficulty. I did not start these workouts at the same place. That's very important to say. I lost 40 pounds doing the Tracy Anderson method and kind of progressed through that method. Where with Hamlin, I was starting where I had stopped the Tracy Anderson method. There's still results to be talked about. But I wasn't starting at the same place, and I'm certainly not going to eat back on to start at that same place. But I can let you know where I was at from where Tracy ended and Hamlin began. Now, the frequency in both of these workouts, what is recommended? Tracy Anderson really would like you to be moving your body seven days a week. This is what she re requires that you are going to be doing this work at least six to seven times a week. That is what's required to make these changes. You need to be constantly moving your body so it gets used to doing these different moves. It's just a repetitive thing. When you keep doing something, your body will kind of get used to it. You know how if you go to a chiropractor and you need to go every day to get this adjustment so that your body starts to stay in that position? It's the same with Tracy Anderson. You need to constantly be doing these to build what she's trying to build in your body and to make these significant changes. So she recommends six to seven days a week of this workout. And cardio, five days a week. Hamlin really likes to have rest days. He wants you to work out five days a week, take a couple rest days as needed, depending on which program you decide to do. But it's basically five or six days a week with a rest day in there. And again, as your body needs it, listen to your body. It will tell you when a rest day is needed and take one. If you're somebody that doesn't like to take rest days, 
that's possible too. I'm not big on rest days, so I really didn't take a lot of rest days during both of these programs. But that's just me. I just like to keep moving and like to be doing something. Hunger levels during these workouts. Now, some people find when they do more cardio, they are ravenous. I did not find this. I was intermittent fasting for both of these workouts. I worked out fasted. And I usually, I do the workout in the morning, and then I don't really have a meal till 2 o'clock. So I did not find myself overly ravenous. I just drank more water if I thought I was at all hungry. But I did not find the cardio made me more ravenous in either of these workouts. Warm-ups and cool-downs. Now, Tracy's warm-up is basically her opening ceremony with her arms. That is your warm-up. She wants you to get your whole body engaged so that you're getting a really good warm-up in here before you start doing your exercises. Now, there isn't really a cool-down. So you go from your opening ceremony arms, which is your warm-up, into your abs, into your floor work. And then there's maybe one or two stretches done at the end. Not a lot of stretching at the end of these workouts, nor is there a lot with the cardio portion. You just kind of start. So you're not really doing a great cool down at the end of your workout. And if you are somebody that can be prone to stiffness after a workout, make sure that you're adding a little more stretches before and after these workouts so that you're really getting your body ready for the workout. Hamlin, on the other hand, is amazing. His warm up and cool down are by far one of the best I've done in a long time. He really makes sure that your arms are totally warmed up, your shoulders are warmed up, that you're ready to get into a really strong workout. And this is one of the things in Hamlin that I absolutely love is his arm section. Now, with Tracy, you really have like five, six minutes of opening arms, and that is it. You're done. That's the end of the arms. Hamlin can go on for 10 minutes in arms. You feel the arms. Huge. Even though Tracy talks about getting these tiny little arms and how great the arm workout is, I really enjoyed the Hamlin arm workout better and have continued doing the Hamlin arm workout because I just really love the way it makes me feel and that it works my shoulder really well. I'm getting a lot more movement because he really takes the time to warm you up and cool you down. His cool down, again, you have a good five or six minutes of a cool down. He takes his time with the stretches. He makes sure that you're stretching out that butt. You're stretching out your back. Everything that you use so that that lactic acid can not pool in those muscles, and you are not stiff after you do the workout. It's really important that this stretching happens in any workout that you're doing. His workout is really exceptional in the warm-up and the cool-down. Both of these workouts really do require some stamina, some determination, some motivation, and you need to be prepared for them to be hard. Like, it's a workout, and workouts are meant to be hard and meant to challenge your body. Tracy is going to challenge you in ways you never knew you could be challenged. More so than any workout I think that I've ever done. Where Tracy is very specific in her movements. But repetitions are really key. So when you are doing this workout, you really need to get to the point where you are getting all of those repetitions in to see results. If you are only doing 10 or 20 repetitions and taking lots of breaks, you're not going to see a lot of results from this workout. You need to work yourself up every 10 days to complete all of those repetitions. Not everybody starts at the same place. So if you're finding that you're struggling with the repetitions, stay at the level a little longer and make sure you get those repetitions before you move on because it's a really big part of where this is going. Hamlin, on the other hand, you don't have that problem. As I said, it's timed. So you're doing a one minute plank, a two minutes of sit-ups. And however many you can do, if you can do 20 sit-ups in that two minutes or you can do 50 sit-ups in that amount of time, this is how you're going to base this workout. And this is how this workout is going to grow with you. Tracy is set in stone. This is what you do for how long. Hamlin is a little more open to what you want to do because you are not dealing with lanes. You are not dealing with levels. You are working at your own pace, at your own level, and advancing as you can. You're still going to get a great workout with both of these. Now, sweat factor. I base a lot of workouts on the sweat factor. I like to sweat. I feel that when I sweat, I just know that I've done something good. I've worked myself up. I've got my heart rate going. Sweating is good. Tracy Anderson, you are a puddle. Like, seriously. My clothes are being peeled off me. My hair is stuck to my head. I'm dripping on the floor. I'm actually wiping up sweat. Like, this is a sweaty workout. You cannot get away after doing this workout without a shower. It is absolutely impossible. If you don't need a shower, you didn't work hard enough. 
You are just going to be sweating buckets. And it's a really important part of her workout is the sweating. I did not do this workout with any humidity. I just did the workout as it was originally done. Hamlin, on the other hand, the sweat factor for me is extremely low. I don't find I need a shower after every workout that I do. Some are sweatier than others. But on a level of sweat, Tracy is like a 9 out of 10 and Hamlin is like a 3. I really don't find the sweat factor there. It differs in both of these workouts just by the, how strenuous the workouts are. Tracy, you're working fast and you're working hard. Hamlin, you're working a lot slower, but you're concentrating a little more on the movements. And a lot of the times they are slower movements, so you may not be sweating as much. This brings us into the length of the workouts. Now, Tracy Anderson is 30 minutes of floor and 30 minutes of dance cardio for a total of 60 minutes. Hamlin's workouts run 53 minutes to 90 minutes. But again, he combines his cardio in with his workout. Not every workout. It depends on which ones you're doing. But the inch loss and the model workouts, you do have cardio portions in here. So you may do 10 minutes of cardio, 10 minutes of the floor, 20 minutes of cardio, 20. You know, it just varies on these workouts as to what you are doing as far as your cardio portion goes. And it makes the workout go by a little quicker. So where Tracy, you have to do two separate workouts to get your full 60 minutes in. Hamlin is one workout that varies from 53 to 90 minutes. The 90-minute workouts are very easy to break up. You can break them up into 30-minute segments, or you can break them up into 15-minute segments, however you need to do them. Some of them have the cardio portion first, and then the toning afterwards, and some have an interspersed within the workout. So you can figure out from that three-week rotation which workouts you like and what works best for your body. But as far as a sweating aspect, Tracy Anderson, superior in the sweating aspect if you really want to sweat during your workout. Both of these workouts, Tracy and the Hamlin workout, do have a consultation that you can have. Now, Tracy Anderson has trainers that do the consultation with you. You will not do a one-on-one -on -one with Tracy. But you can contact the trainers. They will help you figure out what centric you are. It is free. There's a link below, Trainers Connect. You can get a hold of them and ask them what you should be doing and what they suggest you start with. They will give you some tips and tricks, and I found them really helpful, very friendly, and a really great service. You send in a couple pictures, front, back, sides, what you're trying to achieve, and they will direct you as to where you need to go in this program. Hamlin does also offer this service. It's a consultation for 175 pounds. The consultation is done with him directly. It's about 20 to 30 minutes. Again, you will send pictures, front, back, sides, and you will talk about what your goals are and what you're looking for. And you will leave that with an eight-week program that he will set up for you. So the consultation is not free, but you are leaving with a workout plan. So you are getting something in return from your consultation. Where Tracy, it's just a free service, but you're not getting a program out of it. You're just getting some recommendations. But both of them do offer this service that you can ask questions at any time, as well as their community pages. Do not forget your resources. The community pages are super helpful. I'm going to link them where you can go and you can talk to like-minded people doing like-minded workouts. People that have switched from one to the other and back again. Lots of conversations that are really good and really helpful and just seeing what everyone else is doing. The difficulty factor in these workouts, I think I've kind of briefed over. Uh, Tracy, as far as being a level of difficulty for metamorphosis for a beginner workout is really an 8 out of 10. It's a hard workout. It's going to take you a while to get with. But as I said, if you stick with it, your results are going to be amazing. Hamlin is a much easier workout to transition into. It's much kinder on your body. Uh, because you're moving slower, you're not doing as many compound movements. This was a big thing with Tracy, was trying to learn a lot of these movements because you're doing so many different things at the same time, where Hamlin doesn't add as many compound movements. You might be doing a marching in place with an arms, but you're not really having to figure out a arm and a leg and a flip and a, you're not doing a lot of those crazy compound movements that do come into play in Tracy Anderson. But they're fun and they're great to do. So it's whatever you really are thinking about. So let's get down to the final, what results did I find from both of these programs? And how did I really feel they worked for me and my age? Because I really am addressing you. These are women that are my age that think maybe they can't do these workouts. You know, if you are 20 or 30, you can do all these workouts with no problem. Even if you're 40, you can do these workouts with no problem. Like, you just need to do them. But if you are older and you're maybe hesitant about getting into some of these workouts and not thinking that you're capable of doing them, you really can. 
Everybody needs to start somewhere. Just start slow and be consistent and you can get where you want to be. It's not that difficult. You see my before and after pictures with Tracy and you see that I was not in great shape before I started this. But in 90 days, I could not get over the body that I created with this workout. The body that she created. You know, she gave me the tools to get this body that I needed. I had to do the work, but the tools were given to me. So this is what you're going to have to do. You're going to have to bear down. You're going to have to persevere. You're going to have to be consistent in order to see those results. But they are attainable. Anybody can do this. You just need to stick with it. Handling results. There's my after picture. Now, again, as I said, I'm starting at two different places. Okay, I'm starting Hamlin from the Tracy body that I had created. Now, what did I honestly find happen in my body during these two things? Because I think this is really important for somebody who is older, women 50 and older, that are afraid of certain things that happen when you work out and you lose a lot of weight. The first thing that happens is skin. Okay, it's big. It's really big. Okay, you start getting, you know, the skin under your arms and you start getting skin here and you start getting skin on your thighs that's creeping down to your knees. And then you put on a pair of shorts and you're kind of feeling, I look good. And then you look and you're like, oh my God, you're shocked. I found that. With Tracy, I had a lot of hanging stuff. I, you know, not, not tons and tons of hanging stuff, but enough that I noticed it. And it made me kind of aware that I didn't want to wear that bikini because Things were just kind of loose in spots. I did my best to tighten up. Now, she talks a lot about that and how repetitive doing these exercises will bring that skin back to the muscle. And yes, to some points it will. But at the drastic rate that I found I really lost weight, that wasn't really happening with me. So I did have a lot of hanging skin that was a problem. Not a problem that required any surgery, but just if you're going to be losing, you know, over 20 pounds and you're older, you will find this hanging skin. So what happened when I did the Hamlin method? It went away. Now, like I said, I'm at about four or five pounds weight difference in these workouts. But I am finding a big difference in my skin texture. Hamlin is using a lot of those larger muscle groups. So I have built some muscle. But you also need to remember that muscle is not something you build quickly. It takes a long time to build muscle. And depending on your body frame and shape, long limb people don't build as much muscle as stocky people do. Like these are just factors that you need to take into consideration. But I did find that I have firmed up. My arms have firmed up. My legs have firmed up. I only have one little spot that I'm going to try and get a picture of that and I'm going to try and show you a picture of the skin before, but I don't know if it's going to be a really good picture that you're going to really be able to see it. But it was really significant where when I started doing Hamlin, I honestly found these things lifting and pulling up. I also want you to have a really clear understanding of the differences that I honestly found in these workouts. Tracy gave me that tiny, tight little body that you see from the pictures. Hamlin gave me a thicker body. And I've talked about this before. I just feel a little bit thicker. It's not bad. I'm not mad at it, but I preferred that tiny little body. Now, I'm going to mix these two workouts up to try and get back to that tiny little body. And I am waiting on a consultation to see what he would recommend because maybe me mixing up all these workouts haven't been the greatest for my body and I need to specifically stick to one program or a couple programs that will get me where I want to be. This is in no way the end of my Hamlin training because I am not willing to give this workout up. I love every aspect of it. I like the longer workouts. I like the shorter workouts. I like the tone. I like the cardio. I just like every aspect of both of these workouts. But I found at this time, I got a little thicker body. And I may have to go back on keto just to get off those couple pounds to see where my body proportion is because I'm not necessarily happy with the thicker waist or the thicker leg. And again, I, there's only four or five pounds difference in my weight from Tracy to now, but it is a noticeable difference because I am a tiny person. I'm only 5'2". So it, you know, it, it does seem to make a difference with my body. There just maybe could be a couple little factors, Christmas, a couple different things that came in there, but both of these workouts were amazing. I do find a difference in how I feel with my body. 
Both of these workouts made me feel extremely strong. Both of these workouts gave me that girdle effect almost immediately. As soon as you start doing Tracy, you feel that whole suck in right here. Everything just corsets and sucks right in. Hamlin is the same way. You will feel that same corseting, sucking in motion almost immediately. Tracy uses a lot more cross vectors. And I find that gives you a different lengthening to your body. Where Hamlin doesn't use as many cross vectors. They're there, but they're just in a different way presented to you. So that was what I found is that I really found both of these workouts totally amazing. I'm in love with both of them. I am going to continue with both of them and they're both going to fit into my week. I like the results I get from both of them. One gives me that tiny body that I want. The other gives me that strength and works with other muscles that I really feel that I need. The older you get, I do find that you need to get a little more muscle on your body. And I do not, well, do not want to lift heavy weights. I have, as I said, I have owned a gym. I have lifted weights. They are not kind to my body. You need to listen to your body and what it needs. I do very well with a lighter weight. I do not need to be lifting anything heavy. It just creates more injury in my body. So listen to your body. It will tell you what you want to do. But if you're enjoying our content so far and you've stuck with us this far, please hit that like and subscribe. It really lets me know and lets the algorithm know that you're enjoying the video and pushes it out to more people. We really want to get more people involved in the community and more people in our age group. You know, if you are over 50 and you are looking to work out, follow us along and see what we're going to do because I'm going to keep adding different things in that I enjoy and that I find are really helpful in my life and creating that happy, healthy life that I want to create for myself. So until I see you next time, I hope you've really gotten some value out of this and that there's some information here that maybe you didn't know before starting both of these workouts. So until next time, have some awesome workouts. You are amazing. High five.